the way Fallout 4 handles unique weapons is a significant departure from the ways of Fallout 3 and New Vegas. There are still unique weapons you can earn from quests or find in the world, but they've largely been replaced by legendary weapons with random effects that drop from tougher foes. Can you beat Fallout 4 with only legendary weapons? I ignored Codsworth, named myself Legendary, and started assigning special points. Because all weapon types can be used, there isn't one specific stat that's more important than the others. I drained Charisma and put a lot of the points into Intelligence to level up faster, but the rest are pretty spread out. I used my invisible legs to push a tricycle into the river as an experiment to see if it would still be there 200 years later. Saw the mushroom cloud, took a nap, had a nightmare, woke up, and used my patented close the doors technique to avoid the roaches and escape the vault. I forgot to see if the tricycle was still there, maxed out intelligence, and got to work scrapping every object known to man. Now is the time to explain what qualifies as a legendary weapon. For the purposes of this challenge, a legendary weapon is anything that has a legendary effect, but they don't necessarily have to have a prefix to be a legendary weapon. Kellogg's Pistol refills your action points when you get a critical hit, which is the Relentless Legendary Effect. It doesn't have Relentless in its name, but is still a legendary weapon. If you happen to disagree with me, that's okay, feel free to dislike the video. After scrapping damn near everything I could find, I got to work laying down all the wooden poles in the world, almost a thousand of them, to level myself up a few times. It took several minutes to do, and leveled me up about four times. The first few perks I picked were like my first wife, useful to have on occasion, but you wouldn't be losing much by not taking them. Next came the task of getting my paws on a legendary weapon. They're more powerful than your standard weapons, which makes them not the easiest thing in the world to obtain. I figured the smartest option would be to work with the Brotherhood early on. Completing the Arc Jack quest gets you a legendary weapon. On my way to the police station, I encountered Wolfgang and convinced him to open fire on Trudy, hoping they'd all kill each other to give me something to laugh about. God wasn't thrilled with my desire for blood and sought to smite us all with heavy doses of radiation as punishment for my evil ways. Dance and nobody else with a name worth mentioning fought off the ghouls outside the police station. I ransacked their pockets for Chuck E. Cheese tokens, Dance and I waddled our way to Arcjet, and the nothing continued. I'm effectively a soundboard at this point. How many times can I say the same thing over and over and over again? Why are you even watching this? You already know what the answer is. Dance killed everything in his path until we got to the reactor area and I did something stupid. I activated the rocket test and ran outside the blast room before it went off. In a shocking twist, standing 10 feet away from a rocket propulsion test turns your body into something that resembles melted ice cream tossed into a forest fire. One time I missed the jump to safety, so I took the blast like a man and died like a mouse. A few attempts later, I managed to get to safety. Dance didn't turn into paste, I snagged the deep range transmitter, we left Arcjet, and I got my first legendary weapon. Righteous Authority, a laser rifle that makes critical shots do double damage, and the critical meter fills 15% faster. Seeing as I have luck at 1, this might as well be a normal laser rifle. I picked up most of the ammo and energy weapons off the synths inside Arcjet, so I had a pretty solid supply of ammo at my disposal. I went ahead and reported back to Dance at the police station to advance their questline a bit, then set out for Diamond City. I'd set the difficulty to normal, but after killing a raider in two shots, I cranked that bitch up to very hard for two reasons. The first is to satiate the masochist in me, and the second is because some people have ran their mouth at me for playing on the easiest difficulty. They can't grasp the simple concept that the challenge isn't supposed to come from the in-game difficulty setting. A third reason could be that legendary weapons are plenty powerful on their own. I realized, shortly after getting mentally, physically, and emotionally assaulted by a pair of Meyer Lurks, that very hard is, in fact, very hard. But I didn't let that deter me. I arrived at Diamond City, pockets lined with hopes, dreams, and garbage, sold most of that garbage to Arturo to buy some ammo, fusion cells are stupid expensive by the way, and got Nick's location from Ellie for no reason. Before leaving, I picked up trash for Baldy and came oh so close to frying his brain with my light gun after he called me a jackass. I left Diamond City in the dust and began my journey to the east. A super mutant laid down a sick voodoo spell with a missile launcher that exploded my leg after he died and I started clearing out everyone at Charles View Amphitheater. 
they had little to no armor, meaning most of the diehard fanatics died in a few shots. But their bullets did big damage to my feelings, and eventually killed me. Between sending all those cultists to the afterlife, and helping some ghouls who should have been there a long time ago, I barely had any ammo left. Then, Swan bonked me on the back of the head with a boulder. The trigger men down in Park Street Station were about as tough as I expected. Some refuse to accept energy weapons as a legitimate class of weapons, so they take more shots than average to put to sleep. The first batch set me back a ways. I only had about a dozen shots remaining in my arsenal. I exited the facility and had a new target. There's a legendary pipe crying out for help in a sewer somewhere. I could feel it in my fingernails. The problem was that I entered the sewer with five shots remaining. Lady Luck was on my side. I managed to finish off the last raider with my last shot and find Big Jim, the legendary pipe that has a 20% chance to cripple an enemy's leg. 18 damage isn't great, but melee weapons don't run out of ammo, which is why I needed it. With my tool in hand, I beat the monkey and tested out my wrench on a few raiders, returned to Diamond City, off to Synth and got eviscerated in record time, bought a few more combat batteries, and returned to Park Street Station to finish the job of rescuing Nikki. The pipe didn't do nearly as much damage against the trigger men as I would have liked. Still, it was useful to have something to fall back on. Like if you're shoveling snow and your shovel breaks, you could always just douse the snow in gasoline and melt it all. The problem of melee combat in Fallout 4 is as prevalent as ever. I loathe it. I'd tell you how much, but the last time I did, my Doom video got demonetized. Let me put it this way, I hate it about as much as my dead dog hated thunderstorms. I used the power of positivity to make quick work of Dino, rescued Nick, took a few wallops when beating the trigger man to death, used sneak attack bonuses along with the laser gun to wipe out what remained of Skinny Malone's gang before he knew what hit him. Had a nearly 4 minute long loading screen, despite Fallout 4 being played on an SSD, accused Nick of being in cahoots with the Neanderthals that stole my son, and got inside Kellogg's house. I followed Dogmeat to the entrance of Diamond City just to make sure he would eventually make his way to Fort Hagen, scrapped all my stuff in Sanctuary because I know me doing it this way bothers some people, installed a hook on my pipe wrench, and set sail for Fort Hagen. What's that saying? Step on a crack, break your mother's back? That applies to landmines too. Except instead of breaking my mother's back, it turned mine into cottage cheese dyed red and splattered on the ground. Kellogg had recruited my former and now feral ghoul neighbors in a last attempt to stop me from entering Fort Hagen. Didn't work. Pesky laws kept me from killing them before the war, but there was nothing to stop me this time. I met up with Dogmeat for the last time, he would never be seen again, and entered Fort Hagen. My first pro gamer strat was to use the pipe, because the sound of metal scraping against metal turns me on, but also because I wanted to conserve ammo. Then it occurred to me that I could recover more ammo from each dead synth than it took to kill them, so it made logistical sense to use lasers to kill them all. I entered the fort with 41 laser bullets, and by the time I approached Kellogg, I had 369 bullets. Psycho and Jet allowed me to get the upper hand and eliminate Kellogg and his synths in less than 15 seconds. With Kellogg finally laid to rest, I returned to Diamond City to do an interview with Piper. She was gone. So I stole some of her stuff and talked to Nick about what to do next. My map pointed me towards Good Neighbor. On my way there, I stopped by Good Street Apparel to take out Clutch. His name applies to me, not him, and because there was a bounty on his skull. Also, at some point, I modified my Righteous Authority to do burning damage, because the burn of a laser was not burning enough. I did a bit of parkour after I left, not that I jumped on a bench fake parkour shit, got a few raiders hooked on death, killed Finn upon entering Good Neighbor, bought more ammo from the robot lady, and entered Kellogg's brain. On my way out to the glowing sea, I stopped by Bunker Hill to see if they had any ammo. This is always funny to me, being a foot away from Kessler but yelling anyway. Here, I found something neat, Spray and Pray, a legendary submachine gun that does explosive damage with each shot. The only problem is I can't afford it. I could've if I sold most of my ammo, but that would've defeated the purpose of buying it in the first place. I tried stepping on Cricket to get it off her corpse, didn't work. I really wanted that gun though. I wanted it so bad that I was willing to commit murder to obtain it. Every soul inside BATTFL building was sent on its way in my effort to find enough trash to sell to get it. I spent a fair bit of ammo inside that building and, spoiler alert, didn't get enough stuff to get my gun. Not that it would've mattered if I did, because Cricket was gone. I'd reloaded a save after I killed her the first time, so she's not in hell, if that's what you're wondering. Defeated, I scrapped more stuff, looked at a few mods, and was off to obtain a new gun that's been lost at sea for some decades. The Syndromes at Easy Street Downs were not happy to see me. 
they were a tad bit troublesome to kill, and I didn't have a chance to loot their bodies as the assault tron came after me. Thankfully, I was retreating to the sea, regardless of whether a robotic whore was after me or not. I discovered Libertalia, sold a few things to make sure my inventory was at least a little clear, and took on the forces of Libertalia. Once I got on board the ship, I began using Kellogg's pistol because why not, entered the boat interior, and got this shotgun. It has a name that I'm not even gonna try to say. With another weapon added to my collection, I sold things at Diamond City and embarked towards the Sea of Green. Speaking of green, I killed a whole bunch of raiders inside a hardware store and made some green paint for that guy working on the wall at Diamond City. But just like the tricycle, I forgot to give it to him. I crossed paths with a legendary Red Widow Bloodbug, a ways into the glowing sea, and got myself something worthless, and took the fight to ravenous zealots worshipping some heretic. If my sometimes official Christian Ratatouille fan club Discord server has taught me anything, it's that non-believers must be punished with a bullet. I attempted to kill Virgil when I found him, but this is a Bethesda game, so that's not an option. He told me about the Courser. What it was didn't matter, it would be dead before too long. Before killing something that technically wasn't even alive, I went ahead and cleared out the Museum of Freedom for some easy experience. Lured out the Deathclaw because there were Brotherhood troopers in the area, so I wouldn't have to deal with it myself, and saw a legendary Brotherhood scribe. Their life was forfeited the moment they entered mine. The stars aligned, what she dropped was actually pretty solid. The night was a little tough to kill though. Green Tech Geriatrics was next. The timing could not have been better. I got a shotgun that does 50% more damage to humans just before entering a building filled with them. Yeah, it wasn't that great actually. Only fire and two shots before reloading was a real hindrance. In fact, the other legendary shotgun I had was much more convenient, especially with the Nerd Rage perk. A legendary gunner guarded the entrance to the elevator and dropped a nifty little toothpick. Again, the timing was perfect. I tried to use it against the Courser after pumping myself full of Psycho and Jet, but it was just horrible. I switched to the shotgun and shot in the Courser's general direction until it died. I decapitated a few people and left to get some caps from the vendors at Bunker Hill before finally getting down to business. One of the locations Cricket can visit is Vault 81. I went there and waited in 8-12 to 12 hour chunks until she arrived and I had the opportunity to buy Spray and Pray. The world was now my oyster. Dr. Amari was as worthless as ever. I entered the Old North Church and my submachine gun fucking annihilated a legendary feral ghoul. Tinkerbell analyzed the courser chip I found. I told Deacon I'd meet him somewhere, got the teleportation plans from the big green idiot, and then spoke to Deacon, primarily because I had a lot of 10mm ammo and wanted something to use it for. We, and by we I mean I, the only person who matters in this story, decided that we were going to their old base through the front door. The explosive machine gun made quick work of everything inside, even with the difficulty on hard. Then, because this game sucks, Deacon informed me that we can't go through the front because the elevator is busted. Nice job, Bethesda. You could do this quest two ways, but actually only one, because we couldn't put any effort into anything. I used Righteous Authority inside the base for the same reason in Fort Hagen. The ammo spent will effectively refill itself upon looting synth bodies. Deacon gave me Willy Whisper's old gun, and I got welcomed into the railroad. While I was down there, and because I had the caps to spare, I bought Tinker Tom's Special, a legendary hunting rifle just to add more options to my arsenal of weapons. Then, for some reason, I did a quest for the railroad that involved clearing out a church full of raiders, meeting a fake person, and escorting him to a building for safekeeping. I knew I wasn't going to side with the railroad, but I did the quest anyway. From there, I rode up to the Bridwin with Dance, got my orders from Kells, who looked oddly shiny, listened to the king run his stupid mouth at all the people stupid enough to believe his message, met the necessary folks, tucked away inside the blimp, and ODST'd myself down into the water to begin the grueling task of ridding an island of super mutants. The normal mutants were not too terribly tough. Sure, they took at least 10 shots each to kill, but it was manageable. The behemoth was something else entirely. I could have knocked the difficulty down, but that would have been really lame. Instead, I used 130 shots from my laser gun to do most of the damage and a single shot from my shotgun to finish him off. The mutants on the main level of the building were about the same as those outside. Those downstairs were different, primarily because one had a missile launcher. The second time, I was through playing around and explosive machine gun their irradiated asses, spoke to Max, and got to work putting together the teleporter. Surprisingly, nothing went wrong this time. No cripples got in my way, I didn't run out of junk, and I got inside the institute with no issues. 
I loaded a holotape with nonsense for Ingram, met father, and decided right then and there that he must die. Everything in the institute came after me, and I do mean everything. An ungodly amount of robots and peasants ran my way, all eager to die. Most were relatively low-level cannon fodder, and only served to add more ammo to my pockets. I looted most of the bodies I'd made upstairs, and was up to around 1300 fusion cells. After taking the elevator back down, things got violent. This is where Spray and Prey really shines. Dozens of synths, all tightly packed into three small rooms, so that every bullet that explodes can do damage to multiple synths at once. Looting them took far longer than killing them did. I'd forgotten about those waiting for me by the teleporter. They were much trickier to deal with. I tried a few times to destroy them all, but the wider doorway allowed more of them to shoot at me at once, and the more open room they were in made the machine gun less effective than it was before. Then, I put two points into the commando perk to make the gun do 40% more damage. Well, 60 in total, but it went up to 60 from 20. That was a game changer, and made this gun far more destructive than even Beerus could imagine. At one point, I even stopped to make sure that I was still on hard because of how disgusting it was. Once all the synths stopped moving, I had somewhere around 3400 fusion cells left, so I didn't even bother taking any of the ammo from the corpses. Maxon was pissed, what else is new? I traveled out to the bowling alley to recruit a scientist for our cause, made a few upgrades to a few of my weapons, and went to Aunt Mildred's hospital for the mentally unwell to retrieve a souvenir magnet for Ingram. The only thing of note inside there was the legendary super mutant that I burned to death with my laser gun the second I walked through the door. It dropped a mighty missile launcher which, while neat, wasn't actually all that effective in practice. After making the actuators, I was sent to the glowing sea to secure a few hundred nukes. This was frustrating. An enemy looming in the distance occupied enough of Scribe Halen's attention that I couldn't speak to her. Killing her failed the quest. Fast traveling back to the base did nothing, so I lured a pair of Assaultrons looming outside the nearby vault to her to see what would happen. The Assaultrons couldn't kill her for some reason. Once they died, I could talk to Halen and make my way out to the Sentinel site. The ghouls inside were all a joke. There was a legendary one on the inside that dropped something worthless. I accidentally used a stealth boy that literally lasted maybe 40 seconds, had a surprisingly hell of a time killing Adam's Wrath, secured the nukes, and returned to the Bridwin to find that Dance had gone AWOL. Tracking him down wasn't difficult, thanks to me knowing where he went and having a waypoint on my map pointing me to that exact spot. I used the double barrel shotgun that did 50% more damage to slay him ironically, returned to the blimp, spoke to Shiny Face, and began wiping out the railroad. The agents they sent to stop me were formidable in their own way. Not frightening though, almost more annoying than anything else. Spray and Prey made a dog's dinner out of every one of the named NPCs down in Railroad HQ. I had another nice 3 minute long loading screen and went with the cripple to retrieve the beryllium agitator. Things got a little weird as we circled around the building before landing. Down in the reactor area, I took a sip of the water and turned into Meltman as it melted my insides and began fighting the robots. The sentry bot was tough as nails, it should be proud of how many shots it took to kill. The Assaultrons should not be proud, they were weak and deserved death. At the airport, Liberty Prime was finally back online and there was not a hamster's chance in a garbage disposal that I was following that giant fuck all the way to the CIT ruins. I fast traveled someplace close to CIT ruins, fell into the river when trying to hide behind the guard railing, and did absolutely nothing while Liberty Prime and the Brotherhood forces cleared out the area of synths and blasted their way into the Institute. I still had well over 1000 fusion cells, so I took my time destroying everything I could as I pressed deeper into the Institute. The combat monkeys were far harder to kill than I would have guessed. So tough, in fact, that I didn't even kill them. I did some quick scoping with a legendary hunting rifle because I hadn't gotten enough clips to add to my montage yet and got a bloodied sledgehammer that does more damage the lower your health is. I thought this would work perfectly with the nerd rage perk. It didn't. I did do a sweet barrel roll when I died though. Once I used father's terminal to open up the barriers, a bunch of idiots blocked the doorway. I used psycho, jet, and medics to quickly annihilate everything guarding the reactor. Even the legendary synth died in seconds. I planted the charge. We got teleported to safety. I blew up the institute. I blasted Elder Maxon with my remaining ammo as the screen faded to black and I beat Fallout 4 with only legendary weapons.
And that's going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Fallout 4 with only legendary weapons. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. If you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything, leave a dislike. Thanks to the Champion Tier supporters as well as the other channel members for making videos like this one possible. Join the Mitten Squad Discord server through a link in the video description. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.